This week in Pro Moto, the chase for the number one plate in 250 gets even tighter. And we talk to a first time overall winner. Show you two Moto America races that were decided by less than a second. And take you to South Dakota for a half mile of fast. ATV MX is wrapped, but who took the title? That and more only on the Racer X Show. Hello and thanks for checking out the Racer X Show. I'm Greg. We have all of that stuff that you just saw. Plus, we're going to show you who's representing the U.S. at the Motocross the Nations this year and how you can win a 450. We've got a lot to do, so let's get going. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by a Cherubis, Soul, and Passion, and by Yoshimira, the leader in performance exhaust. First up, the motocross segment presented by Acherbys with the Lucas Oil Pro Motocross Championship back in action at Unadilla. The big chatter is, of course, the four-point gap in the 250 title chase. It's close between Red Bull KTM's Marvin Muskan and Yamalube Star Racing Yamaha's Jeremy Martin. But who would have it when it all shook out? Well, here's Jason Wygant and Grant Langston with the story. Rolling hills and green pasture lands of upstate New York are the host site of round 10 of the Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross Championship, sanctioned by MA Pro Racing and the Red Bull Unadilla National. Great start for Joey Savace in the 37. Grab some motorsport.com whole shot. Marva Muskan in third. Innocent that was a crash. Silly, yeah, silly yeah. mistake though. He, he had no way to go. Slides out, and then it just made it a little more difficult because he was ahead of the, of the uh, well, not Cooper it's Webb, Webb, sorry. He had mud on there, it looked like a one. <laughs> Webb just uh, lost the front end, gone on that drop off, off camp. He stuck under the bike, asking for help. Finished the moto in 18th. He was unhurt, but took a while to get up. Jeremy Martin, late in the race, finally catches Savachi, makes the move, gets to the inside over a series of jumps, and from there he would take off. Savacci would close back in at the end because he was under pressure from his teammate Aldridge and Marvin Muskan. Here they all come across the line. Eighth moto win of the year for Martin, so he and Muskan are now tied in that category. They're darn close in pretty much every statistical breakdown. <laughs> Joey Savacci led a long way in this one, but Marvin Muskan battling for the title gets desperate. Great move on the inside, made it happen when he needed to, and puts the Red Bull KTM into the lead. Then Savachi under pressure, gets passed by Cooper Webb. Webb goes after Muscan for the lead, but then goes down with a lap and a half to go. Savachi moves back up to second. A pair of second place finishes on the day is enough for Savachi to win the overall, while Muscan wins the moto. Muscan was fourth in the first race, so he just gets edged out for that overall win. But if you're Muscan, just getting that moto win and max points in that race alone. Plessinger, nice job for third. And J-Mart didn't see much of him. Started about 13th, was able to climb up to fifth. Only a two-point lead with two rounds to go. Wow. Martin and Muskan going to take it right down to our finale in Indiana. And good job, Savachi's overall win pushes him back ahead of Zach Osborne for third in the series standings. What did not happen today? We saw wow. everything. Great start for Justin Bright on the BTOsports.com KTM. But watch Christoph Porcel oh. down in the middle. Head over heels goes Ken Roxon, and two of the favorites today are knocked from contention. Roxon was hurting when he got up. He managed to climb to 16th at the end of this race. Porcel was 23rd, so they rode it out. Great effort, but it will not show in the results. When it's not your year, it's not your year, right? So now Brayton under pressure early from Dungey, and this is a beautiful move by your series leader. Nice underneath the 10, and that was really it. Dungey, once he had the lead, no one saw him. Checked out over Justin Barsha and takes the moto win. Trey Kennard would outduel Justin Bogle and Sean Simpson to take third. Sean Simpson, what a ride. Fourth place in his first ever race in the U.S. Good job by the Scott. Freddie Norin, fifth, also a good ride for him. We mentioned Roxon, 16th. That's five championship points trying to keep the slim hopes he has still alive. Dean Wilson, 11th. Five overall wins for Dungeon this year out of 10 rounds. That's a heck of a season. Here's your Lucas Oil race recap. Justin Bogle on the 19, making his debut on a 450cc machine. Grabs your Motosport.com whole shot. So that's a good way to start it. Yeah, it was a great way to start it. Unfortunately, 
he was not able to sustain being up front due to a crash but you see the riders filing through on the opening lap dungy grabs the lead bogle still in a great position in second you see Barsha, porcel and everyone trying to challenge from behind but then right here watch the number 19 on the red bike bogle comes out of his turn gets a little cross rider when he lands watch bike twitch and then boom boom slams the ground and he would uh, exit this race probably a little winded ken roxa got up to second put heat on dungy for 30 minutes and dungy didn't put a wheel wrong and just managed to hold him off the final margin of victory 1.6 seconds that's some close competition and the fans definitely liked it out here as we add another classic to the Unadilla history book. Here are your results from our second moto. And Justin Barsha, fourth, will be enough for a uh, second overall. Because Roxon had the bad first moto today, he loses ground to Barsha in the championship. They were actually tied for second coming in. Off day for Blake Bag and a pair of bad starts, but he's still up in fourth. Catch the Pro Motocross Series live on MAB TV for the first motos, 3 p.m. East on that. And then on NBCSN, a slight delay for the second motos, 11 p.m. East is the starting time. Come on, it's Saturday night. You can stay up and watch. Priorities, people. Well, that 250 battle sure was close, and hats off the first-time overall winner, Joey Savacci, who joins us now from his training facility in Florida. Welcome to the show, Joey. How are you? Very good, man. How are you? Yeah, I'm doing well, thanks. So, Joey, congratulations. Your first overall in pro motocross just three days ago. Has it uh, sunk in yet? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, it's nothing really changes for me during the week. I still come back on Sundays and, and hang out on Sunday and then go back to the farm and ride Monday, Tuesday, and normally Thursday. But obviously, this week's a little bit different. I fly out Wednesday. We have press day in Salt Lake on Thursday. So, nothing changes. We uh, come back and, and continue to do the same things that we've been doing all year and hopefully continue the uh, the streak of, of good riding. Let's talk Mitch Payton. You've said how much he's behind you and believes in you. Can you give us more insight into that? Yeah, no, Mitch believes in me um, 100%. Uh, probably sometimes he believes in me more than I do when, when, when we go through phases. But I mean, I stay at his house every time I go to California and, and eat dinner with him almost every night. And, and we have a lot of heart to hearts but I mean at the end of the day he's he's the boss but at the same time he's he's one of the the few people in my group that that truly believes that we can win and, and has believed in me since the beginning and that's and he'll tell you like he tells me that's the reason he hired me he wouldn't have hired me in the beginning if he didn't think that I had the ability or he didn't think it was possible for me to win so to have him um behind me and to continue to support me is, is great and like I said in the interview it's to ride for Pro Circuit has really been a dream, is a kind of a dream ride for me since I was little. That's one person I've always wanted to ride for. So when I got the call um, for Mitch himself, it was kind of like one of those deals where I had other offers on the table. But once I got the call from him, it was like those other offers really even weren't worth it anymore to me because I had gotten the call that I had really wanted my whole life. So when that came through and, and all the pieces lined up, it was it was a no brainer for me. All right, Joey, thanks for joining us here on the Race Direct Show. Good luck this weekend at Miller, and we'll see you on Friday. Perfect, man. Thank you for having me. On Saturday at Unadilla, the three-rider lineup for Team USA was announced for the 2015 FIM Motocross of Nations in preparation for the country's quest to claim a historic 23rd victory. Leading the way will be Autotrader.com, Toyota Yamaha's Justin Barsha, along with a very fast, very determined Yamalube star racing Yamaha duo of Jeremy Martin and Cooper Webb. Team USA jumps into action on September 26th and 7th in Ernie, France. But how would you like to win a brand new 2015 450 four-stroker of your choice? Yep, you pick it. A Honda, Husqvarna, Kawasaki, KTM, Suzuki, or Yamaha. And all the proceeds go towards funding the Asterix Mobile Medical Center. How? Head to winna450.com and purchase all the raffle tickets your heart desires. Do it before August 21st. The winner will be picked August 22nd at the 2015 Bud Light Ironman National in Crawfordsville, Indiana. The winner does not need to be present to claim their prize. What are you waiting for? Get your tickets now at winaf450.com and help support the Asterix Mobile Medical Center today. And that is our motocross segment brought to you by a Acherbys. All right, now it's time for our road race segment presented by Yoshimira. And we'll start with the American Superbike Championship known as Moto America. They were in support of MotoGP this weekend 
at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Now, Moto America's Superbike class rolled in all tied up between teammates on the Monster Energy Graves Yamahas, number one, Josh Hayes, number six, Cameron Bobier. But when it was all over, one clear leader emerged. Bobier was your pole sitter with Yoshimura Suzuki's Roger Hayden wedge between the teammates, as Hayden made good use of his front row start to jump out to an early lead. When the race settled down, it would turn into Hayden versus Bobier, with Hayes lingering back in third. Late in the race, Bobier sized up Hayden Suzuki and skillfully made the draft and pass move. The onboard is sweet. On the final run to the flag, Hayden couldn't return the favor, with Bobier taking max points for this one. Jake Lewis in with a solid fourth, and how about Elena Myers, also Suzuki mounted, fifth from the former Daytona Sport Bike race winner. The next day, same grid and go, but with a threat of rain. No doubt the Yost Superbike is dialed in for the starts, as the advantage goes to the 95. But once again, Bobier would use the draft and pass to go to P1, but this time, Hayden had some answers. But Hayes was closing in as well. However, debris flags flying as rain is starting to come down. And that lap, the 6 and the 95 were close at the line. That would prove pivotal. Because even with Hayes close and passing Hayden, the red flag came out, stopping all the race action, reverting back to the last lap completed. Cam wins by a whisker. Lewis again for fourth with Chris Ulrich on the Geico Suzuki. He rolls off a solid fifth place finish. But up top, this is what it looks like, 18 points now. That might be a tough margin to overcome for Hayes, even though the final round heads to New Jersey, where Hayes has been the man for years. Time for a MotoGP update from Indy in what shaped up to be two great races. Movie star Yamaha's Jorge Lorenzo battled it out with Repsol Honda's Marc Marquez. The pair would go deep into the race until Marquez finally made his move and won by just over half a second. Marquez now has seven wins in America. He's never lost. His teammate Danny Pedroza challenged Valentino Rossi, passed him but made a mistake. Rossi held off Pedroza to capture another podium finish and only lose a couple of points in the championship to his teammate Lorenzo. Nine now the margin heading into next week's race in the Czech Republic. That is so exciting, right Chad Reed? Like I said, MotoGP heads to Brno in the Czech Republic. Fox Sports 1 has the coverage Sunday the 16th at 7.30 a.m. East. Moto America's one-hour highlight show from Indy airs on CBS Sports Network at 10.30 a.m. East, Saturday the 15th. Check that out. And that is our road race segment presented by Yoshimira. We now move on to the AMA Pro Flat Track, where last Tuesday night, the most talented dirt track riders in the world took to the half mile of Black Hills Speedway to race in front of a large crowd. Most were there for the infamous Sturgis Motorcycle Rally. And one storyline kept coming up. This deep in the season and leading the championship winless, can Rogers Racing Jared Meese get off the schneid and get one? Well, boom, and we go racing. And from second on the grid, Meese was able to grab the whole shot. And that would be all she wrote. Number two, Zanotti Racing Harley-Davidson's Kenny Colbeth had been the dominant rider until the GNC won Maine. And he closed the gap on me several times throughout the race, but never could mount anything serious. The most intense battle was for third, with Briar Bauman coming away with his second third place finish of 2015. But hats off to Mies, who gets number one of 15. That start saved me. and. Um... The motorcycle ran so good, and uh, it felt so good to get that first win. It just so good. With the win, Mies extends his lead in the Harley-Davidson GNC1 presented by Vance and Hines point standings, and now 18 over Crosley Radio Kawasaki's Brian Smith. AMA Pro Flat Track on FansChoice.tv this week in around six hours of coverage from Peoria, beginning at 5 p.m. East. Fire up that computer and get to the watching. Well, our first summer racing series is all wrapped up, and I'm sad to say it's the 2015 Mountain Dew ATV Motocross National Championship. And it came down to the wire on Saturday as a legendary Loretta Lynn's Ranch played host. Just 15 points separated the top two riders, Wienan Motorsports Yamaha's Chad Wienan, going for a record-breaking fourth consecutive title, and Hetrick Racing Corrosion Specialty Honda's Joel Hetrick. As for their season-long battle, well, it all came down to the final checkered flag. Before the race, if you thought Joel Hetrick was nervous, he sure didn't show it, as he once again grabbed the ATVRiders.com top qualifier for the ninth time this season. But racing is racing. 
And when the first moto got underway, Hetrick kept the momentum rolling by grabbing the SSI decals hole shot for the 11th time this season. But Weenan was right in the mix, quickly putting himself into second ahead of Maxxis H&M Motorsport Honda's David Hagsma Jr. With his solid points paying position in hand and Hetrick putting on a torrid pace, it would stay like this all the way to the end. And in the end, Hetrick took his 11th moto win by 5.591 seconds ahead of Weenan, now only a 12 point advantage. With those 12 points in hand, the three-time champ needed to finish eighth or better if Hetrick went on to record the 1-1 sweep. A surprise out of the gate as Team BTF Honda's Joe Bird grabbed the whole shot just ahead of Root River Racing Honda's Josh Upperman. Upperman would assume the top spot before the completion of the opening lap with Weenan making a charge into second and Hagman Jr. third. Hetrick, however, had his work cut out for him, beginning the moto in fifth, which forced him to chase down Weenan. Wien put even more pressure on Hetrick by taking the top spot away from Upperman. Hetrick responded by moving up a position, but then he stalled it. That would drop him down to eighth. That incident ended Hetrick's title hopes as Wienan continued to add to his advantage over the field. Hetrick would recover for a podium position, but the man who won out the season with a moto win and the overall, Chad Wienan. Confirmation of the final ATV MX race, Brown landed on the overall podium for the eighth time with a hard-fought third-place finish going 3-2. But a record-breaking fourth consecutive national championship for Chad Wienan. Man, I just made some uh, quick passes on a couple guys, and then uh, we had Upperman out front, and man, he, he's keeping a good pace. Uh, I set a couple better lines and made the move on him and pulled a quick gap right away, and uh, man, it's just so awesome. Uh, finish out the year with a win and uh, here at Loretta to wrap up the championship fourth straight. And uh, this year we reached our goal, but we're gonna enjoy this one and uh, so happy. Thank you. Weenan finished 2015 with a 17 point edge over Hetrick in the final standing. While Brown round out the top three, 56 back from the number one plate. I cannot wait to see what next year brings. This weekend on MAV TV, you can catch the half hour show from round eight in Spring Creek ATV National August 15th, 10.30 a.m. on the east side, 7.30 a.m. for you folks next to the Pacific Ocean. Get out of the house and get to a race. Pro Motocross heads west to Salt Lake City for the penultimate round of the championship, Miller Motorsports Park. Come out and see if Ryan Dungey can wrap it up early. AMA Pro Flat Track races at the famed Peoria TT in Illinois. A jump and stuff, so much fun to watch. And MotoGP is at Brno in the Czech Republic. Share that fun with over 120,000 fans on Sunday for that one. The Racer X Show with Greg White is being presented by a Cherubis, Soul and Passion. And by Yoshimira, the leader in performance exhaust. Okay, we're wrapping things up today. We'd like to extend our congratulations to a few racers. JD Beach in Moto America wrapped up the Super Sport title. We'll talk to him next week. And Caleb Russell? He won his first of a possible three championships. We'll have the highlights from that next week as well. If you like the show, feel free to share it with everyone. I should have a good signal at Miller on Friday, and I'm gonna do some Periscope stuff from the Pro Motocross Paddock on Periscope, so you can follow me on Twitter to check that out. It's at Greg White. Well, for the fine crew here at the Racer X Show and Racer TV, thank you so much for watching. And remember, folks, we are all racing all the time.